Hello guys, welcome back to Talks Writers. In this video we want to talk about post-processing of biodegradation and corrosion process. So, what does it mean? I mean corrosion, you know corrosion, but biodegradation. By biodegradation I mean like the corrosion inside the human body or an animal body that uh, you put an implant there that is like a temporary implant and it starts to degrade if it is made from, it's manufactured from biodegradable material. So when you put it there and instead of just bring it back when, when you don't need it anymore, you can you can produce it in a way that it degrades it disappears and in this in this simulation we wanted to do that for a very simple screw but instead of the body just assume just imagine that you put this screw inside a solution so it degrades this gray surface this white surface it degrades and it releases material in this case for example this is magnesium so if you have magnesium, we have magnesium corrosion on the surrounding of this, of this screw. And at the same time, we have these, its degradation. So what we want to, to create is something like this. This animation has three components, as you can see. The first one is the solution. A cut on the solution, and it displays the concentration changes as a contour. The second one is the surface, which is indeed, yeah, I will show you how to create those kind of stuff from functions, from vector fields, from fields, for, from these kind of variables. And then the third one is indeed a translucent and a transparent uh, representation of the, of the original shape of the screw, or let's say of the surfaces. In this way, you can have these three components together, which creates really nice yeah, animation and representation of the project and the simulation. And this one is just very similar to the previous one, but without the cut, without the contour of the solution, of the concentrations of, uh, of the medium, let's say. So for the files, we similar to the previous project, we have um, a set of WDK files, each saved at specific time points and yeah the number is uh, related to the corresponding time step so each this the data are saved at each four at, at each 40 steps so without losing time let's go to preview and open these uh, uh, files don't forget to download these files from the link you can find in the description below. And yeah, we open it as a series this time, as a group. I click apply, and yeah, this is the cylinder, which is indeed the medium, and this screw is inside. This is a label, we don't want to deal with the label. The mesh is relatively coarse, which is refined on the interface of the scaffold apparently. Have nothing to do with the uh, with the surface with the with a mesh. Uh, here we have uh, four variables, so four different chemical components. The one that we are interested uh, in are this magnesium concentration and a phi function. The concept of phi function will be discussed more in the post processing of the interface tracking technique. Uh, for level set and for the face field, but and also in the future, very detailed videos about these techniques. But uh, very quickly, I can say that this is indeed a function that maps the whole space, as we already say, the discretize, discretize space into a function field, a function that says the distance of each point. To the cur to the cur to the to the surface of desire, let's say, and in this case, the surface of desire is uh, the this crew scaffold, the, the the scaffold or this crew surface about which we wanna study uh, the degradation. 
So the phi function, as can be seen here, is indeed the distance of the internal scaffold, the distance of each point to the surface to the surface of a scaffold. I said all of these to say, to point out that the this gray surface, this white surface, is nothing but the zero isocontour of this phi function. So what I should do to plot this, uh, this, this surface is ask part of you to just show me the points at which the value of phi is zero. And then you can easily create such, uh, such a representation. Let's go step by step. Let's have a look first at this, at the internal parts of this. So I created a creep. It's usually useful to just disable sh this checkbox to sh to hide the plane. Otherwise, you can mistakenly just select it and then move it. This is what I do always. I just deselect it and then click apply. And I switch back to the magnesium. And yeah, this is indeed the uh, screw. Inside, inside of that, the magnesium concentration, I put it here to be more visible to you. Inside of that, we have a, a certain amount of magnesium, which is related to its density. I don't want to discuss that here. And in the surrounding, we don't have any concentration of magnesium. Over time, I press this play button. Over time, it starts to release magnesium through the medium. Pretty cool. And uh, in the initial time step, I come back to the first frame in initial time step. This is indeed the, uh, the phi function, the distance function. So from the color bar, from, the, from this legend, we can see that the zero, the zero is a contour is where the interface uh, is located indeed. Uh, so, I, the way that I can plot this, but before going to plot that, let me show you quickly a better way of representing this. If I want to, for example, show the surface, the mesh, the mesh file, if you don't have a cloud in your paper and anywhere, it's usually better to post process it in this way, that you click this crinkle clip. When you apply the clip filter, press apply, it creates this one. It never goes through the elements. It shows the elements like this. As you can see, this is much better. And by zooming that, zooming into that, we can see that okay, this is this is indeed a refined mesh on the interface. Pretty cool. So instead of showing this, let me create another. So I just hide this. I told you this 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 eye icon is pretty handy. I click this one again, and then I insert another clip filter. But this time, instead of having plain box sphere cylinder, I will go to the scalar. And then I will select five function and I say, okay, for just plot the zero ISO control. And in this case, if I press apply, you see what happens. It seems that nothing has happened, but no, something has happened. Let me create another clip on this one. And then you see, oops. So you can see that the thing is, the filter has worked, but in an opposite way. So on this clip two, I delete this one. I don't need this, uh, the clip three at this moment. So on clip two, I click invert. And by doing that, it shows me the surface of the scaffold. Of the uh, of the screw. Sorry, I say a scaffold because it, we usually deal with the scaffold degradation, and this is a term in my mind, and that's all. That's why I usually say scaffold for this. And yeah, this is element wise finite element. I could have converted the output to the cell base, no difference. And if I sh now show this clip, you can see that I have them both together which creates a very nice and handy and very nice and pretty uh, in the representation of the, of the simulation. I can run it. So it shows how it degrades 
and how it releases, how the, how the magnesium is released through the medium. And in order to show the initial state of the surfaces, I can also show this one in like solid color, but with a transparency. It's called opacity here. So with a transparency, I can display it in this way. And instead of this gray and white color, I can say, yeah, do just display it, for example, in this color. The opacity is too high still. Yeah, something like this. As you can see, now it's more or less very similar to the videos to the video that I showed you. And then, yeah, that's it. So that's how it works. And if I started with, for example, with an, with a point-based data, or if I had converted this one, I can do that right now. You can convert it. Uh, or convert this one to the cell data to point data. I selected this one, and then what you should do is indeed selecting these these uh, clips and change the input to this one. And this is the way that you can change the the, the hierarchy. But I don't want to do that right now. This is indeed pretty nice. This is the way that the data is structured. You can do that, but yeah, that's uh, that's enough for this demonstration. I think. And then you can have animations from different aspects. And one of the videos was also without this contour. So this is indeed the way that it works. So just the initial state, because if there are two surfaces, and then how it degrades over time. I hope you enjoy it. Try to reproduce this from the data and also other cool videos from your data or with the data set that I have provided for you. So have fun. See you later. Bye.